Okay. I know we have flights to get to, and I am not allowed to let you leave early, or late, or early for that matter. I'd like to hear back from just a few tables on the discussions you've been having now. Very briefly, what are some of the high points? Is there a table that wants to volunteer? We have a volunteer table. Good afternoon, everyone. So from this group, first of all, how will the sector coexist with the who certify and some who don't? I think we felt that even that question gives a feeling that there will be some difficulty. So we got into two things. One, if it's made clear by even those who take a certification route that there is another option which is not certification, then it should make a little more easier for others to understand. So while the group or the constituency that is keen to push certification forward or make that as the characteristics of their work should also make it a point to explain that this is not the only way forward. So Philip's first statement is absolutely welcome and that should be something that should that should resonate throughout the work of the certification process. Uh, right, the second one, so what's the added value of certification? So it was stated that it can and it is feasible and it's even achievable, but is this an actual value for money? Is that the route? So today we have not heard much evidence that, that certification will either immediately or on an incremental way will increase the quality, effectiveness, and accountability of organizations. But then if this process moves forward with several range of consultants moving around, they, well, they might generate, but is that the best way to forward? So that was one of the key concerns that came up. Then, right, in terms of learning, I think that was a good point which clearly came out that this is one of the purposes, but for for the purposes of learning, is certification the best way? So that was another question that came up from this group. Uh, yeah, then peer review. It's not just the same people within the organization evaluating each other, but the peer review, will the certification process consider that as one of the tools or mechanisms through which uh, we can achieve better results through this process? I think this for if the group. Yeah, in this group, we, we noted the, the irony that in a process which began with the intention of reducing the organizational architecture across the system, the pro proposal is to create a new organization. Uh, we also noted that, that if the main intention of certification and the value is in learning, then is it the best way to learn to have an organization which focused on certification so the learning is going to come from the certifiers when potentially the money could be spent on uh, surveys in communities and get the communities to teach us instead of the auditors. Uh, we also noted that there's clear overlap in intention between the proposed role of the um, HAP people in aid new entity of learning and this organization of learning. So there's real concern about the organizational architecture behind this. Um, we also noted that while it's voluntary, if donors establish it as conditionality, then the idea of it being voluntary starts to go out the window. And so there's, there's concern of um, this could start to be a stick with which we can beat ourselves or beat others. Um, both from donor or from host government perspectives. Equally, there are potential opportunities, clearly for international organizations, the idea of having um, a quick justification to get visas and access into a, a country on the basis of the fact you've got certification is an advantage, or could be. Uh, some some feedback for, from this table. How will the sector coexist with some who certify while well, that's already happening? You know, the sector is coexisting. There are agencies that are certified and there are, there are agencies that aren't. Um, and we pose the question that if there are national certifications, do we actually need to 
you know, adopt a, a universal model? You know, what, what's the what's the, the the added value? And I think we were coming more to an alignment piece and recogni recognition uh, around that one. We were very clear that. Um, you know, we need to look at uh, a number of different methodologies for assessment, peer assessment, self-assessment, externally assessed, which, and the, the purpose of that was really to create as much access uh, and, and potential engagement uh, as possible. <coughs> um, certainly there are some benefits. Uh, universality would, would uh, maybe help getting acceptance by uh, by governance, create a mutuality of understanding. Certainly, the certification as a as a gatekeeper in a rapid onset uh, emergency situation, uh, and actually, the, the, there already have been benefits from certification. Looking at the people in aid process and seeing the changes in people management as a result, so there's some learning that can be built upon. Um, uh, uh, thinking as we go forward. But I think that, that there is a concern that we still need to demonstrate benefits and, uh, and make the case that that's been said, um, uh, but also a strong commitment to regionalization and needing to know, well, what actually is the plan to take that idea forward? <coughs> um, we do have some concerns, concerns that governments, governments may use it to deny access, issues around cost, issues around the potential to undermine current civil society organisations and the potential that actually certification for some NGOs would make their relationship with their, their, govern their national governments increasingly difficult and problematic. Um, four points from our table. Um, so I think perhaps echoing what others have said, we, we do see there is a danger that certification, if taken as a, um, an absolute position by a donor, could be um, an obstacle to some legitimate emerging um, agencies, north or south, um, accessing resourcing. Um, we did see some potential positives, both in terms of when northern or um, external agencies are looking to partner with um, local entities that you could have a reference point for looking at quality um, though we see there are dangers in that that it could be substitute for agencies to do their own assessment but in a future world as well where the kind of marketplace of engagement may shift around and you may have more power um, for southern entities and, and northern entities are looking to partner with them maybe um, the questions could be asked of the, the kind of northern entities, what's your, what's your credibility? And the, the, southerners, the southern entities are asking the northern ones to demonstrate to them that the, you're legitimate partners. So there could be positive in that sense. And finally, we had a bit of a concern about the roadmap that you showed us, Philip. We felt that the time frame was quite ambitious where, as some people were saying, if it's got to link with the CHS, some of the tools, some of the indicators and the guidance aren't there. And if you're going to be fast tracking this towards the World Humanitarian Summit, it seemed rather ambitious um, when we know that those processes take time. So we felt you shouldn't be driven by that end date to get your two assessments in if, um, as we know, these things are quite complex. Hi, uh, this is Sawako from JANIC, and uh, I'd like just to share two points that uh, our group discussed. And one is on the first point on the coexisting uh, uh, situation. And that is that uh, we saw already there is a moderate level of competition exist. And so that's the reality we will be continuing. But uh, with, although think, think we think it's important that everyone should be taking part this time, but we'll need some, uh, maybe could set up like track A and track B. So the track A goes for the first track, meaning that, that it aims for certification and make effort at, at certain timing. But the track B can gradually, you know, uh, apply their uh, situation uh, so that, uh, how do you call it, even though the objective could not be necessarily a certification itself, but the process of learning is very important. 
And the uh, second point that we shared is that uh, it's not on the PowerPoint, but the fourth point on the sheet, that what are the potential, potential concerns? And we thought that uh, this roadmap, which was shown here, seems so time-bound, these things. And, but uh, so we shouldn't be hastened to be achieve everything on that time bond so that uh, because the, what we are aiming for needs time for the real organizational and uh, sort of um, change within each, each and everyone. So that kind of, um, how do you call it, uh, some necessary, how do you call it, additional concern <laughs> should always be uh, there to not be forgotten. Yeah, I think that's very good. Okay. Okay, um, in terms of this small NGO reflection, I would like to share something on behalf of our table. Just um, the core humanitarian standard is a tool for quality and accountability. So NGOs shouldn't take this, their whole dynamics will be tested by the uh, core humanitarian standards and it will be resulted on the certification or not certification. So it shouldn't be perceived from the NGOs. This is an exam, they will be fail or they will be pass. So understanding of the certification process, this is ongoing process. Um, the, one, the other point is certification should be very clear very well structured to explain to them. We talk about a kind of checkbox. So checkbox which, which has some we accomplished already, somehow we accomplished and we will continue. So this type of very well clear structure will be useful. And the other thing, trust building. Uh, the small NGOs has already some, have already some disadvantages for getting funds from donors, from the full-time staff to the annual budget and so on. So this uh, certification process shouldn't be very critical um, criteria for them. If they pass this certification, they will reach or they will have a chance to access some donors or the others. So this type of dynamics from the, from the small NGOs uh, in terms of the certification process would be uh, useful. And the announcement from the, or from the promotion of the is, Corimentarian standards and the certification process from the beginning would be useful. So they will get the idea when they start the um, implementation, there will be a kind of certification process, but cert certification process is help to their accountability and the quality of the service. Thank you. Uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, similar discussions we had. Just on the, the last point that uh, was made around uh, behaviour of donors, in terms of coexistence, it's absolutely critical uh, how the uh, donors behave. Uh, and uh, if it's a compulsion to be certified to get funding, no matter who it is, that takes away the voluntarism uh, of it. So one needs to think about that. But also taking that further, even if all national local organizations uh, are certified therefore should have be on a level playing field and get access to funds is the capacity there within the donors to actually uh, uh, honor that or will it still be the large grants uh, in terms of uh, some of the uh, benefits of certification uh, it will actually, it should actually put uh, all organizations uh, certified on a level playing field uh, and give nationality and uh, give uh, visibility to all organizations who are certified which uh, at, on an equal uh, basis which would be a, a positive thing uh, on the counter side there would be dangers of creation of hierarchies uh, of organizations some who are seen as certified them um, for meeting a standard and others who are not therefore not meeting a standard so there's a danger uh, of hierarchies being created and finally uh, in terms of uh, uh, I suppose the, the, the sort of tipping point 
yes, if there is a certification model, it has to be universal, it has to be global, but uh, it needs to be established not necessarily in Europe, in Switzerland or wherever. Actually, it may be an awful lot better to establish it uh, in uh, another part of the world outside of Europe or USA. Uh, regarding to the coexistence between uh, certified and uncertified organizations, uh, we have discussed that the verification and the certification process will be voluntary. So if it will be voluntary, there will be um, certified and uncertified organization. And in the previous standards like HUB and the people in uh, aid, there, there are also organizations who are certified and who are not certified. So we do not see any uh, prob problematic uh, in coexistence between certified and uncertified organization. But uh, in the process, uh, we see that there would be an increasing pressure on uh, non-certified organization to join uh, the mass and to be certified in the long term. But if all agencies are working uh, toward the CHS, uh, we do not see different approach on doing certification as uh, problematic. Regarding to the potential benefits, uh, uh, we mentioned uh, three points. The first one is uh, it can serve as a means to effectively implement the CHS. Uh, those who certified uh, may consider this process as a means to implement CHS. And the other issue is credibility. Those who certified may be got credibility at the public. And the last point is uh, it may be considered as a motivation to implement uh, or to enhance uh, the perfor performance of uh, the organization. So the information we need to influence the decision makers in our organization is, the first one is uh, we need to be clarity on what will be required specifically for organizations. We have uh, introduced or we have um, uh, influenced the management or the decision makers at our organization to implement the HAP standard, for example, but now the new initiative is uh, uh, come, so we have to convince the rationale behind introducing the new initiatives. And the potential concern against certification is that uh, the voluntary scheme, now it is a voluntary, but it will become mandatory. As is already mentioned by the Denmark government uh, previously, the government may require as a mandatory to be certified. The donor agencies may certification as a mandatory to uh, program or project funding. So it will be an, a negative implication for uh, small organizations who are not ready to be certified. Thank you. Building on that last point, three points from this table from a quite lively conversation. Um, the first was the danger that uh, certification might crystallize existing inequalities between large and small organizations um, and potentially suggestion that to prevent that happening there should be we should slow down the certification process and instead throw a lot of resources at capacity building and uh, process improvement in many organizations to level the playing field before certification was brought in so that was the first thing the second was uh, concern that certification might um, prejudice against organizations working in resource poor contexts and underfunded environments, particularly in Africa. Very difficult to actually reach the, the quality standards in the 50% funded program. Uh, so that was the second. And then the third was we were a little bit, uh, or some people around the table, were a little confused as to certification as a tool for organizational learning um, and thought that maybe we should use tools for organizational learning, for organizational learning. Uh, weren't quite so sure how the certification part fitted in and would like to know more about that. I think I finally exhausted the number of volunteer tables. It's strange, all of us CHR reps are dressed in black today. <laughs> no, they won't sing a song, at least I don't think they will. 
we're not doing another panel discussion. The idea really was, and I'll hand it over to Kate, was that members of SCHR will react to a bit of what they're hearing in the room, and I will stop there and hand over to Kate. Thank you. Thank you very, sorry. Thank you very much. So as Raj said, the idea is really give an opportunity to my colleagues to have a quick reaction, so they'll pick certain issues. Hans, would you be okay if we started with you? If you want me, I can start. Um, and I, would, I want to, would like to build a bit on what my colleague Jane uh, Cocking said this morning about uh, what certification would mean for Oxfam, building on the clarity, uh, what she said, it will, the core humanitarian standards will bring clarity, uh, more coherence, and it is also a tool that we can use for our internal and external communications. For me uh, and for us, I think the external certification and external verification potentially leading to external certification is, the, is building on that because we will build our own internal systems for verification. But we are also building a new confederation as Oxfam. So an external verification would allow us and enable us both to have a more coherent and quality assurance into, because we are building more uh, uh, power and giving more power to countries and southern Oxfam affiliates to build internal coherence that really the quality that we try to assure via our internal uh, verification making are also uh, guaranteed and um, controlled and um, assessed by a more inter independent body. I also think, in my perspective, that it's an important tool for southern NGOs because 20 years ago we agreed on a code of conduct. Article 6 of the code of conduct of the Red Cross, the celebration was one week ago, is that we, I think from the top of my head, we built on local capacities. Apparently the issue of local capacity and the fear that we they will not be part of the game, and they are not part of the game because only limited amounts of funding goes to local NGOs, and a lot of the work that we do is still operationally. Apparently we have failed as sector. So I see in building capacity of organizations and also using the core humanitarian standards as the framework what we consider as capacity, and then have an external organization assessing that as a powerful tool um, for empowering local organizations to get the role and the place that we need if we want to change the rules of the game and if we want to meet the challenges in that we all see uh, that we are going to face more people affected by crisis. So for me it's an important and for us it's an important tool to strengthen both our internal system but also build um, the, the capacities at the local level. That's my first. Okay? Thank you very much. John? Okay. Um, so. so CARE is currently um, not uh, um, an entity that's uh, gone through any significant certification process. So I think, I think um, our approach to engaging is really to um, engage in a pilot to test the hypothesis that, that Philip put out there at the beginning, um, that certification maybe can lead to better um, um, results, but, but that's not a given. So I think that's the spirit that we would enter into this, look at it from the outside and learn both for ourselves, but also organizations we work with, which we might choose to call partners, as well as the implications for some of those new actors who are um, very much in our space. So I think we go in it with an open mind um, you know, uh, to, to see what, what the outcome is. I think we see um, certification as potentially being challenging to ourselves, so I think it's good that we um, test ourselves against a high, a high bar as an international organisation that makes certain claims. Um, I think it has um, opportunities for us as well um, to, to kind of demonstrate um, our legitimacy. But then there's this, also this issue of responsibility and I think this question that many people are putting out about what it might mean for other actors and to be part of a process that does forge things or in, in a pilot looks at whether we can forge things in a way that we have different speeds and different mechanisms for different actors. 
as well, crucially, I think, and, and sitting as I do on, on the Sphere board as well, making sure that it's set up in the right way. And we do have question marks, that, as I said, from our group that um, we're not quite there yet. We're excited about the CHS as a mechanism, but it's got to be done properly at the proper speed. So I think we can bring added value in that sense um, in terms of proper process um, that Sphere has led the way around for many years around setting things up um, so that we have a robust system. Thank you. My name is Lisa Henry, and I'm here representing ACT Alliance, or Dan Churchy. Um, I'm going to approach this in this way to comment back on some of the questions that have come or the concerns from groups, but also relating that to the experience that the ACT Alliance has had. Um, and I can start by saying we are incredibly pleased that we have the CHS, and we're going to be launching that, and that's going to be the foundation of the work as we move forward. So my comments are premised on that. The, Experience of Act Alliance is there, were, there was one organization that started by being certified and slowly the momentum is growing. So it's to give a picture of this, you have one organization that starts voluntarily, signs up for certification and begins to use the terminology around, at that time it was the benchmarks. This terminology then begins to have some traction and then it begins to be a conversation that people are interested in, concerned about, think sounds kind of uh, fascinating, maybe that could help their work, and suddenly we have a growing number of organizations within the ACT Alliance who voluntarily are choosing to use not only the same terminology, at that point it was the HAP benchmarks and the People in Aid Code of Conduct, um, and then decide among themselves through all their different governing bodies to begin to sign up for an external certification regime. What we saw, see happening in the ACT Alliance is there's now a common uh, platform for conversations about quality and accountability. We didn't exactly have that before. It's growing. Not everybody is on board yet. Out of the 130 members, there's something like six or seven certified. But it's to, to document and to say there is a growing momentum and it gives us a common space to have a dialogue in a more standardized way with all our partners around the globe. We've also given time to be able to say, when will we be certified? Do people want to be certified? Do organizations want to step up? That's their own business. But the interesting point is we've had this common parameter or framework with which to talk about quality and accountability. And I hope, and, and we aspire to in the ACT Alliance, that this kind of conversation around the CHS and certification will enable us in a global way to talk about quality and accountability and using the CHS and the nine commitments there as a common uh, dialogue, conversation, our outreach we hope will also extend to the UN system. So that's the first place. The second one is that there's been a much more within these organizations who've then followed this path, there's been a much more systematic follow-up within their organizations on quality and accountability. We didn't have this before. And whether this is exactly related to the fact that they're certified organizations or not, it's happening. And it's kind of interesting that it's happening. So for those who say there's no hard evidence about the impact of certification, we have an, a lot of organizations in our alliance who are documenting improvement in the quality of the delivery of services. They're getting a lot more feedback from communities that we ever had before. And we're actually changing our programming based on what we're hearing in a much more systematic way in the ACT Alliance. And I think those things are all pieces of evidence that we would contend show the ability of such a system to actually improve our humanitarian response. The last one I would say is when we talk about clarity, this is one of the things that I think a lot of the organizations have talked about today. They need to know what exactly are we rolling out? What is the CHS all about? What will the verification mechanisms look like? I think, again, this is one where the ACT Alliance feels a responsibility. We are a global alliance. We have over 130 partners worldwide of varying levels of um, understanding, capacity, resources, financial resources. There is an obligation of those who have the resources in the ACT Alliance to actually put our effort, our leadership, and our management responsibility and our finances behind rolling out the CHS, the understanding of the CHS, and making sure it is accessible and available to all of those in our network. 
that would be our responsibility and that's what we feel as an alliance we're going to be contributing. So for those who are questioning where the resource is going to be coming from, that is a responsibility that the ACT Alliance among others will take on with respect to the partners uh, within that alliance. Thank you. Well, thank you also for giving us the opportunity to speak here today. And I, um, as um, our international CEO, Jasmine uh, Whitbread, said earlier on, um, the, it all begins actually for us with the standards. These are the most important ones. The CHS is the starting point. And then, in fact, we see the uh, certification as uh, the extension of the, um, of the standards. Uh, and we see it as a way of refining our commitments that we have already made and consolidating the different sets of standards. And as was also mentioned this morning, it's really um, um, in lack of um, these standards when we did our transition from all the different Save the Children members into Save the Children International, we had to uh, set up own standards. And in that sense, uh, having maybe gone through um, a, lo a, a long process already and now uh, being able to um, refine it into these um, uh, new um, standards. Um, we, our, I think our approach is very pragmatic here. Um, and. Um, uh, we actually see the key benefit of, of certification as a way of distinguishing ourselves collectively as principled humanitarian agencies. And um, we also see once there will be a critical mass that those that are certified will distinguish themselves. And I think maybe uh, it's difficult to say, any, to say anything that you haven't already actually discussed in the groups um, because you came up with all these... Um, both concerns, but also I think seeing some of the of the values of this, uh, and and saying well maybe certification in itself does not improve quality and accountability, maybe that's not the main driver. Actually, it's not for us, um, it, but it might be a contributor, um, because the main driver for us would be that we will distinguish ourselves as a principal humanitarian agency, and on the smaller NGOs, the concerns about. Uh, what can the smaller NGOs uh, do? Will there be this big difference between the big ones and, and the small <coughs> ones? Some, some of you said it as well. We believe that there will actually, this is an opportunity to have a more, uh, to, to have a, uh, to leveling the playing field for both the small ones and, and, and the big ones. Um, and um, it's, it's interesting to hear that uh, on some of the issues coming up on the coexistence, some of you said it again, uh, we already do coexist, so I think m we have to be cautious not to create problems now that have not been problems before, and I don't think will become problems with this in, within uh, this new, we have standards and we have certification. Um, so, I also think that our analysis of this is that in the longer perspective, um, and it's not only Save the Children's analysis, I think it's a wider analysis, the, um, it, that the governments and maybe international bodies will at some point require some level of uh, quality assurance, verification or whatever of all of us. And this work has actually been a way of pre-empting and preparing ourselves and avoiding to having to respond to different parallel certification mechanisms because I think we already see them and you, you, some of you were concerned that this creating a certification um, uh, mechanism now uh, would make donors then require that we all are becoming certified. Um, I'm not sure that this is the way it works. It might work the other way around, actually. Uh, so that's why Save the Children actually has thought, well, we can try to avoid having to respond to so many different uh, certification mechanisms in various countries, rather having this and being able to uh, design it and being able to, um, to prepare for that situation. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of us. Should we conclude the session now, Raj? 
We've asked very kindly Rain to try and pull together some key elements from this session. Thank you very much, Rain, for taking this forward. Let me stand up instead of sitting down. Is that better, Iskander? I notice we're running late for our coffee. I get to close sessions when we're running late for lunch and running late for coffee. Great facilitation, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, rather than drag anything out, let me just say thank you on a couple of different levels. First of all, I would like to say thank you in particular to Philip and Kate. The work you've done over the last couple of years uh, around this work has been greatly appreciated, very valued. We have a couple of colleagues that have already mentioned uh, how happy we are that the CHS is the center of this and the thing against which we're certified. And the reason it's there is because of the manner in which you've run the work over the last couple of years. So thank you very much for that. I would, also, I would also like to say uh, thank you to us, uh, all of us in this room, for the uh, comments that have come out of the discussions here. There are clearly uh, many things that still need to be worked through, some very appropriate questions, comments, uh, interesting pieces of feedback that I know are going, to be, uh, are going to be taken forward. It's imperative in that context that we find uh, vehicles, mechanisms to continue the two-way discussion so that as the work on this certification initiative proceeds, we have a chance to continue to hear more of the type of feedback and suggestions that have come out of the discussions here, as well as uh, opportunities to feed learning out of the process uh, on certification back into each of our individual organizations to help progress the conversation. As we said earlier this morning, uh, all of this is very much evolutionary work and uh, for that to happen, of course, we need these avenues of communication uh, to be open. Um, with that, I think I'd like to uh, stop. Thanks very much, everyone.